Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos and today we're going to be doing this distressed wood look and we're going to be adding some sunflowers in with it. Perfect for spring, summer, or even fall. And as always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that way you guys can shop these items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, so today I'm using a 20 ounce skinny. I already prepped and primed my tumbler white and I am actually gonna be using my amazing sealer to apply my glitter. You can use the epoxy method, your Mod Podge, whatever you have on hand, but I'm just gonna be doing it with my sealer today. Now to really help this sealer move around my tumbler and make sure it gets in all those crevices and doesn't leave any peaks and valleys, I'm actually going to wet my brush down and then dip it into my glue. I just kind of like a damp brush because like I said, it just really helps it smooth on a lot better. I'm just using a nice fluffy brush that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's just a makeup brush that I got out of the makeup aisle to apply it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to applying my glitter. I'm actually using two types of glitter. It's completely optional. You could do one glitter or the other does not matter however you guys want to do it but this first one is called bubbly and i'm actually just going to do stripes of the bubbly i didn't want it fully covered i just, I just wanted some little peaks of this chunky kind of underneath now this is like a champagne and opal mix so that white will kind of be showing through which is why i painted it white today so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to fully covering my tumbler, and this is called Believe. Now this is actually a sister cut to Bubbly, so it's actually a, a smaller cut. It's not a fine cut. It's still kind of like a medium size cut, so I decided to use that today to go over top. And I'm just going to fully coat everything with the rest of this glitter here. Now once I have my tumbler fully coated, I'm gonna set it off to the side. I'm gonna let it dry really well. You definitely want any type of glue that you're using to dry up really well, because if you don't, it runs the risk of it looking milky underneath your epoxy, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna set that off to the side, let it dry, and it'll be ready to epoxy. Now that it is nice and dry, I went outside and actually sprayed it down really well with my two times ultra hair. Not that I'm worried about the glitter shifting around, but I'm just worried about this epoxy wicking away off of it once it is applied. So because those metallic glitters don't really give it anything to, to catch on to. So the spray, that clear spray actually really helps out with that process. And once I am done putting on my epoxy, I'm gonna go place it onto my turner, hit it up really good with my blowtorch and let it cure overnight. Now I find whenever I use any type of glue, the Mod Podge or my sealer to apply my glitter, I always find that it's a bit chunkier. <laughs> After that, that flood coat of epoxy goes over the raw glitter. I always find that I have to do a little bit more sanding than usual, which is why I do prefer the epoxy method when applying glitter, but you know, it is what it is. This is how I did it this time. <laughs> So I'm just going to clean up my rim really well. I'm going to give it a good sanding. I'm going to wipe all the debris off, making sure that there's no little little things all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and give it another coat of epoxy over top of this. I'm going to let that cure and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, now that it is nice and smooth, we are ready to start adding our distressed look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm gonna block off about a half an inch to an inch of the top and about the same around the bottom as well. This is just gonna help out uh, when we go to do the cleaning up process here in a little bit, which I'll show you guys. Because I know I didn't really, I didn't want it more up at the top. I wanted to save some room at the top and I didn't want it on the bottom. So we're just gonna mask that off and then we're gonna move outside. Now I'm gonna be using two different types of paints to achieve this look today. I'm just gonna be using a basic black. It doesn't matter if it's gloss, matte, whatever you have on hand will be just fine. I'm gonna give it a coating of this completely around. I'm gonna let that set and dry for a minute and then I'm gonna come back through with my white and do the same thing where I spray right over top of the black. This paint job does not have to be perfect because it's gonna be distressed in the end anyways. And you could also use a tan color to kind of go with the wood look if you'd like as well. Now, as that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about my decals. Now when I'm using skinny tumblers, I really like my quotes to fill the front. So I'm, I just measured that down to about the width that I would like. I kind of just measured where my wood look's gonna be to kind of fit, fit inside of what we're gonna be doing. And so that's how I went with my measurements for my keep your face always toward the sunshine. And I'm just gonna be using a basic black vinyl when I go to cut that out. But for my sunflowers here, I'm gonna show you guys how to utilize 
all of your paper a little bit better because if you did it just now, it would only you would only be able to print out, I think, like six of these sunflowers. So I'm going to show you guys really quick how I like to fill up my pages completely. But I am going to be printing the sunflowers out on clear water slide paper. So after I went ahead and cut out my other quote there, now it's time to go ahead and print out my sunflowers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the square shape right off to the side. I'm going to unlock that. I'm gonna come up to where it says operation and I'm gonna choose print and cut, just a standard print and cut. This is gonna really make sure that we are keeping in the dimensions that they prefer. Now the dimensions are 6.7 in width and the other dimension is 9.25 or 9.2 for the for the height there and those are the proper measurements when you go to print out see if you go up one it's going to give you that little explanation point like no that's that's too big so go back down and keep it right inside those measurements there now the next thing we're going to do is highlight our images here and we're going to make sure to move them to the front or send to front and this is just going to make sure that they come right over top of that that square that we made now all you want to do is simply fill in your images as much as humanly possible <laughs> you don't want anything hanging out over the edge or it won't work so just make sure you fill in the best that you can you might have to twirl them around just do the best you can and then you'll be able to go from six to i think 14 i did here no, that's 15. I did 15 images. Okay. <laughs> now, without touching your images at all, you just want to get rid of the gray box that we put behind it. You're going to go ahead and highlight all of your images all in one fail swoop there. You're going to come down to the lower right-hand corner, and you're going to attach all of your images together. And the next thing you got to do is simply print that out on your clear water slide paper. And of course, don't forget to turn off that bleed. We, we don't want that, okay? <laughs> we don't wanna have to reprint this. <laughs> all right, my quote is all cut in that black vinyl and I already sealed up all my decals. And if you're new and you don't know how to use clear water slide paper, I have, I'll have a tutorial right up in the corner there for you guys to follow on how to properly seal your images. So our next step is we're going to go ahead and move on with our wood look. Now, the only brown that I have, I, I would have preferred a lighter brown, but I didn't have a lighter brown. So I'm gonna utilize the inks I already have on hand to be able to give the look that I would like. So I'm gonna use teak wood and I'm gonna use, I think it was sunshine yellow, and I'm gonna mix the two together to create my own brown. And it's gonna be a lighter brown than it would be if I just used the teak wood. Now doing wood looks is super simple. I'm just gonna use my trusty old two inch chip brush that I have. I, I've used this thing for years. It's still around somehow. Somehow the kids didn't get hold of it. And I'm just gonna dab my brush right into those colors and I'm just gonna swish back and forth just like this. And it's gonna give us the start of that wood look. And now the next time round, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more yellow into my brown. I don't wanna add too much more of my brown. I know if you guys have lighter brown, you don't have to do this, <laughs> but I have to. Now I'm just gonna go right up next where we did the first swish and again I'm just kind of swirling it around and doing fast sweeping motions up and down and that's going to give us our wood look so simple I know you guys got this I most of us have done wood looks but if you're on the fence if you're new and you've never done a wood look it, it's extremely simple that's all you got to do swish it around sweep up and down really fast now the reason why I wanted to do a lighter wood look as opposed to the darker wood look was because my my images, there we go, wouldn't have shown up on a darker wood look. So I wanted to keep it light and airy and kind of go with the theme that we're going for. It's kind of like a golden yellow theme that we're going for. So, And our sunflowers will show up really nice on this lighter background. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that tape and we're going to move on to the distress look. Now some of that ink did spill up underneath my tape. I'm not overly worried about it. It is what it is. It'll 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 get kind of swept up once we go to do this distressed look. Now in order to do the distressed look, you have to use 100% acetone. I just got my, it's just fingernail polish remover. I got it right at the Dollar Tree and it comes in this nifty little container thing. So, you know, and you're gonna need a bunch of paper towels or whatever you guys like to use whenever you go to distress your stuff. But the thing I like to do is kind of hold, and, and you need to be very careful not to touch your paint as well or your, your inks because it'll make little spots. So be very careful with that as well. But all I do is I wad up that paper right into my finger and you have to constantly be 
turning the paper so that way it doesn't have the ink on the paper. So every time you do a little bit, you're gonna have to flip it to a clean piece of paper towel so that way you don't accidentally discolor your epoxy. So I'm not too worried about any kind of smudges or overflow right now. We'll clean that up at the end with some uh, rubbing alcohol, but right now we're just focusing on getting that distressed look going. So I went ahead and did around the bottom. Now I'm gonna come up to the top because it was a little bit easier for me to do at the top than versus the bottom. So all I'm doing is I'm just rolling right up, just very carefully, as you can see, I'm just gonna keep on going until I get about the size that I would want to as far as this distract this distress looks goes there distress looks look anyways <laughs> so I'm just going to keep on taking clean pieces of paper towel dabbing it into my acetone and just very carefully bringing it up into the middle now, like I said to you guys earlier, I said if you wanted to use a uh, like a tan or a light brown color as, as opposed to the white, this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about. It is going to kind of wipe away around the edges that would look. So it's up to you on on how you want it to look. But to me, I, I kind of liked it. You know, it kind of looked like um, like almost like a burnt piece of wood, almost in a way. Or you could even turn this into like a, a cowhide tumbler almost with how it looks as well. It kind of looked like some type of animal skin too. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to do, you know. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue to go around working on where I see. I think that's the hardest part. I think everybody is like, well, how do I do it? Where should I put this distress mark? Just kind of go with the flow. Just wherever your imagination takes you with this, let it take you there. But as you see, I'm gonna go around the top and do the same thing as I did with the bottom. I'm just gonna roll right up onto it, giving it that that just real kind of distressed wood look. I, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, that's the name of the tutorial. <laughs> But like I said, just keep going. I'm going to add in little spots here and there in the center. I'm going to remember where I want my decals, kind of keep in mind where about I would want like my decals. I'm going to keep that in mind as well as I do this process. Now, after I'm done putting in the areas that I would like to fully distress, we're going to come through and just really finish it up and give it these little scratch marks and just little extra stuff to really make it look like a piece of wood wrapped around your tumbler. So as you see, I have it in my finger there and I actually have it so that way I can scratch my paint with my thumbnail. I know, don't use anything sharp though, because if you use something sharp, it will scratch the epoxy and the paint won't come out. It'll get stuck down into your scratches. So I'm just using my thumbnail to very gently make these etch marks right around the edge and in those little spots in the middle as well. And that's really gonna give this just that little extra bit of detail that will make it look even more like a piece of wood. Again, don't be too worried about little smudges and all that. We're gonna fully clean this up once you are done distressing. The only thing that I'm doing here is just kind of wiping away what I can so that way I can see how it looks underneath those smudges. So I'm not fully cleaning, I'm just kind of wiping away so that way I know what it looks like underneath. All right, now that our distressed look is all done, I'm just gonna take some simple rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna use a clean portion of my rag and I'm just gonna go completely around my edges and just really clean it up very well so that way you can see that glitter really good underneath. You'll be able to see the difference. Whenever it's not cleaned up, it looks a little bit smudgy and, and you'll be able to see it. I, I know it's hard to see right here, but right there, you'll be able to see that. But if you just take your rubbing alcohol and just wipe that away and you'll be able to see that glitter perfect underneath. But that's exactly why we use the rubbing alcohol for this. It just cleans it up rather than taking away. Now, before we put on our sunflowers and our quote, I am gonna give it a coating of epoxy first. I did spray it down really good with my two times ultra there just to seal in my inks. So that way they don't discolor. I know some people say that when they give it a coating of the sealer, it discolors, but I've never had that issue. But if you like to let your ink set overnight before you do the epoxy, again, that is completely up to you. But the reason for the epoxy before we add the decals is because once you apply your water slides to it, the water slides tend to make the inks dissipate underneath and you'll be able to see a ring of your decal around the outside and we don't want that. So apply your epoxy and then we'll be ready to have our decals applied. 
All right, now that our epoxy is nice and cured, we're ready to add our finishing touches. Now I am gonna go ahead and apply my quote first. I know some of you are like, why didn't you do the sunflowers first? I don't know, that's just what I do. But if you feel more comfortable um, applying your sunflowers first, go ahead and do it that way. You just really have to make sure that you get all that water out from underneath your decals after you apply them. But I I've done it this way for years, I don't know. Apply your sunflowers first then, okay? And then put your quote over top, it whatever you guys wanna do. All right, now the fun part of applying your flowers. It's okay to come through, cut them apart because we only want the sunflowers on the wood look portion. So you're gonna have to come through and probably trim up a little bit and you're just gonna fully fill in. You're just, you're just gonna fill in all your little sunflowers. You're gonna make sure you get all that water out from underneath. As you see here, I use my little my little tool there and then I use my, my rag here as well to kind of really squeegee everything out. But that's the whole thing with water slide paper is you seal it up really good. You're gonna dunk it in your water that you have off to, that I have off to the side there until that backing starts to come off and just simply slide it on and there you go. But I thought about adding little bees to it or you know other little random flowers and stuff like that. But I really just like the simplicity of the sunflowers on this. So I and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. All right, once you have your tumbler fully filled in with all your little sunflowers, you're just gonna go over it one more time to make sure all that water is wicked out from underneath. You're gonna let your uh, water slides dry onto your tumbler for a little bit. I let mine dry probably for about 30 minutes. Now into the coat of epoxy that I'm about to put over top of this, this is completely optional as well because some people might not want that extra sparkle over the wood look. I wanted the little extra sparkle, so I am gonna add a very small amount of my champagne sparkle dust right into my epoxy. A little bit goes a very long ways, I'm just saying. See how small, Just that's all you need. That's it. <laughs> if that, I mean, you might not even want to add that much. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to stir that up really good. I'm going to apply it to my tumbler, let that cure. I'm going to gauge if I need to apply another coat of epoxy, which I did end up adding another one just to make sure it was nice and smooth. And then she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.